Good morning, everybody. God bless you guys. Thank y'all so much again for another day. Amen. Of joining us by our 6 a.m. Inspire. Amen. God bless you guys. I just want to thank you all so much again for your time. Amen. I do not take your time lightly. Amen. I'm just excited once again to be on the call. Amen. With all of our callers. Amen. And we, we are exceptionally glad as well to be on Facebook Live with all of our viewers, all of our Kingdom Agenda Fellowship and friends. Amen. You guys feel free. Amen. To join us this morning. Amen. Please log on. And uh, amen. Let's have another wonderful uh, 6 a.m. Inspire session. Amen. Indulge it in the word this morning. Amen. What better place can we be right now? Amen. Than to have an opportunity. Amen. To share God's word. Amen. So please log in and um, please like and share. Amen. This video. Please like and share the video this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We are just honored once again, amen, to be in your presence this morning, amen. I pray everybody has had a blessed Monday, amen. We talked talked about that yesterday before we ended. I said, listen, we're going to start Monday, y'all, blessed, and it's going to definitely end on a blessed note. So we have to know that whatever comes out of our mouth, amen, it will manifest in this season, amen. Whatever so that we believe in our hearts, amen, those are the things that's going to manifest right before us this morning. So, amen, I'm just excited, amen, again. Amen. To be sharing God's word with you in this time. Your time is not taken lightly. Amen. I don't take your time lightly that you would get up every morning. Amen. Monday through Wednesday at 6 a.m. Joining us. Amen. On the call. Joining us. Amen. On Facebook Live. We are super, super honored. Amen. To have you this morning. But listen, nevertheless, man, let's have a word of prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Father, for who you are. Once again today, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for another wonderful day, Father, that you created just for us. And we thank you once more, Lord God, that you've allowed us, Lord God, to be able to stand in your presence this morning, Father. We say thank you for who you are. Thank you for being such an awesome and a great God today, Lord. Lord, we believe that you are, that we believe, God, that we are your set people. We believe, God, that we are in a set place. And Father, we also believe, God, that this is a set time. So be it unto us, God, according to your word and your will, Father. And we give you praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is awesome. God is so awesome. He is so awesome. Man. Let me tell you something, guys. Before we get ready to start, I am just so, man, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm telling you, in this time, man, you got to find some of the smallest things of your life to be thankful about. You got to find some of the smallest things that you that you never even noticed sometimes, that you never even thought of. Amen. And just give God thanks about it. I'm telling you, man, it's in the small things. Sometimes it's not always in the big stuff, you know, but sometimes it's the small things. It's the it's just the fact knowing that, you know what, God, you, you are available. I thank God for his availability, man. I'm telling you, it's amazing knowing that at any time, amen, anytime, man, we can give thanks unto the Lord, man. God bless you guys. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Our Eastgate family, Lady Petway. Amen. Thank you, man. Our very own Chief Apostle Moore. Thank you guys for joining. Amen. Uh, Miriam. Amen. I see you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Kawana. God bless you, woman of God. Thank you so much. Amen. For joining us this morning. Amen. Sister Martha. Amen. Blessings to you guys. Amen. I'm telling you, man, we had an amazing session even on yesterday. Amen. Yesterday, we talked about uh, three things. We talked about how God is refocusing, amen, our mindsets, man. I'm telling you, it's amazing in this season that God has re God, that, that we have an opportunity, amen, to go back and get some things right. That's all I've been hearing um, almost in this whole time is that uh, about a lot of us, we have the opportunity to go back and make things right. God is refocusing us, man. He's He's reestablishing our faith. He's remodeling, amen, the image of, of what we are to look like what we should look like in heaven, amen. So I'm telling you, man, it's awesome. It is awesome, man. We talked about those three factors. I'm telling you, but we also settled those three factors on our base scripture, which was in Genesis 1 and 26, amen. That was our foundation right there. So we're going to continue to talk about, amen, our foundation, but I want to talk about it, amen, from another perspective this morning. I want to talk about it from a perspective of how we have to prepare foundation. Now, I know when we think about foundation, we think about something that had, that we can stand on, something that's solid, which is our faith, but how many of you know that, man, we have to, we have to count up the cost of what it's actually going to take, amen, for us to be able to stand on that foundation. Anything that, 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 anything that foundation has 
has anything to do with it for us. Uh, even, even when you get ready to build a house or even when, when foundation is being poured, I want to let you know that sometimes we see it, amen, in its final stage, but sometimes we forget and we don't know what it took to prepare, amen, that foundation. So today, man, today we're going to talk about, amen, counting up the cost, amen. In other words, we're going to talk about being prepared, amen, for that foundational right there. So when we talk about this word foundation and we hear it so often, amen, I want you to understand that that foundation, amen, the definition of foundation is the lowest load. Amen. In other words, it's bearing all, amen, it's bearing a part of the building. It's bearing the whole load, amen, of, of, of a building. In other words, it's the typical below ground level. Amen. It's, it's what holds everything in place. Amen. It's the reason why our foundation is so important. It's the very reason why they sh there shouldn't be any cracks in our, found, in our faith, that there shouldn't be any cracks in our belief. In other words, the Bible tells us in James that, listen, a double-minded man is tossed to and from. In other words, he's unstable in all his ways. That, that has to do with the foundation of our faith. If, if, if one thing comes along, man, and it tosses us here and tosses us there, then guess what? We're not standing on a solid rock. Amen. We're not standing on something that's solid if we're easily moved. But the scripture tells us that, listen, uh, we should be an unshakable kingdom. We should be an unshakable and an unmovable kingdom. So I want to talk from that perspective just for a moment today, and we're going to talk about uh, why this foundation setting is so important. Now, before anything to be in it, for anything to be laid or poured within us, we first got to understand the importance of what it takes in preparation for foundation. Now, Genesis 1 and 26 was our base. In other words, it was our footing scripture. Amen. We're going to talk more about that, about that footing, because when you think about foundation, what the first thing that comes to mind is something that you stand on, which has to do with the footing of something. But we're going to first talk about how to prepare for that, how to prepare for that. So we're going to talk about that in Luke Amen. 14 and 28. Let's go there for just a moment, guys. I promise you, I'm not going to hold your time long this morning. I'm just thankful that you all are joining me. Amen. This morning to share this word. Amen. Luke 14 and 28. 14 and 28. Luke 14 and 28. Amen. And the Bible reads, it says, listen, for, for which of you intending to build a tower? Here it is right here, y'all. For which of you intending, here it is, we've been talking about foundation and we've been talking about building. For which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down first and count the cost. Amen. Let's highlight that. Sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough, amen, to finish it. Now, before we go any further, can I submit something to you? Man, this really fell in my spirit as God was beginning to show me this. Amen. This fell in my spirit. So before we go any further, I want to submit this to you. That sometimes, man, we, 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 we got we to gotta learn how to be good finishers, just like good starters. Man, let me say that again. Sometimes in, in processes that God has us in, what we got to learn in this season is how to become good finishers. And, and just like we became good starters. See, it's easy for a lot of us, man, and I'm talking about myself included. It's easy for us sometimes to put our hands to something and we become good starters with it. But what's been hurting us in so many seasons, what's been keeping us, some of us, in a lot of disobedience is that we don't go back and finish a thing that God told us to start. Man, we got to know how to be good finishers just like we were good starters on something. I know you came up with the idea, but we got to know how to work it all the way through. It's easy to make a, a press presentation sometime. But in this season, man, I need you to understand the power of, of knowing how to finish that thing. We got to become just like that good finishers in this season. Sometimes some of us, man, here it is right here, y'all. Sometimes we need to learn how to remove the pride. Man, I know it's going to get touchy right here. We got to learn how to remove the pride and gain humility. And, and, and can I tell you this right here? And allow some finishers whom we may not approve of, amen, listen, here it is, we, we got to allow some of the finishers whom we may not approve of, catch that, teach us what we need to know about finishing what we're building. 
Man, sometimes the, 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 some of the main people that we, that we don't want to be around, some of the main people that we say that are boring, some of the main people that we say, listen, they, 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 don't, they don't talk like me. They don't, amen, they don't look like I look. They don't go to the same church I go to. Amen. They, they don't, they don't, they're not believers. But can I tell you something? Man, they are anointed to teach you something, though. They are anointed, amen. They got exactly what you need to know how to finish what you're standing upon. Man, y'all help me, somebody. Some of the main people that you pass by in the grocery store, or sometime that you may have your nose tooted up at, man, some of them are the most anointed people, amen, that you ever would want to sit up under in this season, man. Don't, don't come, amen, don't get in yourselves, because can I tell you this? The word says, listen, no, no man after the flesh. See, we've been looking after the flesh in the building process. We've been looking after the flesh in our foundation setting. We've been trying to know things after the flesh. But the Bible says, no, no man after the flesh. I want to just submit that to you this morning, man. We got to become good finishers just like we became good starters. We got to know how to start finishing exactly what God is giving us. Amen. He's giving us that vision. Amen. He's birthed it in us. Amen. We got to know how to finish that thing out. We got to know once again, how back or two. Amen. The vision, though it tear it, but wait for it. That's a part of becoming a good finisher. Listen, we know that the vision is being birthed. Amen. But we, we got to wait. And allow the vision to be all the way out revealed to us. You got to become good finishers. Amen. In this season. Now, again, in Luke 14 and 28, I want to talk about two key factors that are essential in our preparation. Amen. First, I told you earlier to highlight this one instructions. I love when the Bible says this, man. I'm telling you, it says sit down first. Now, we were talking about. Amen. Adding up the cost in this season about foundation, because what, what, what happens is that we forget that, amen, before anything can be poured in us, there's a cost. Man, I love this. Amen. The first instruction was sit down first. Can I tell you something? This is something that we all have time to do in this season. We got the proper time. We have the proper tools to sit down first. Amen. Nothing should be hindering any of us. Amen. To be able to take out this time and just sit down somewhere. Amen. And think for a moment. Amen. Sit down and pray. Amen. Sit down and analyze. Sit down and take a good inventory check and make sure I have every tool that I need before I put my hands to the plow. Man, y'all come on and help me with this. The second thing is this. I love, I love when it said earlier, count the cost. What are we counting? I'm glad you asked, y'all. <laughs> Listen, check this out. Now let's go back up to verse uh, 25. Let's dig back in up to verse 25. Some of you may be asking, well, what are we counting? Amen. Let's go back up to verse 25. I love what Jesus is explaining in this right here. Listen, now the scripture reads this. Now, great multitudes, check this out, a great multitude. We can't even count how many people there were. Great multitudes went with him. Great multitudes. I want you to just understand that everyone loved, listen, in this, everyone loved the miracles. Everybody loved all the miracles. Everybody loved when, amen, all the blessings. Or should I say we love our favorite speaker on Sunday morning? Or should I say we love our favorite artist, our favorite summons on, on Sunday morning? Everyone loved the healing. Everybody loved to get in the healing line. Everybody loved to get in the, in the privacy line. Amen, amen. Everybody loved everything that Jesus could do right here. Listen, they loved the miracles. Amen. They loved the healing that he was doing. They loved the fact that Jesus uh, uh, fed them with free food that he was providing. They loved all that stuff. Jesus was known to him, known to them, uh, amen, being just as we would say today. He was pretty cool. He was pretty down to earth. He, in other words, Jesus in this particular text was the talk of the town. Amen. Because the Bible says that not only were there multitudes, but there were great multitudes. Why? Because of what he had, but they miss who he was. Man, somebody gonna get that in a minute. In this season, you cannot be a, a, a risky, amen, to, to just want to run to God just because of a bailout right now because the world is in a crisis. But don't miss who he is. 
In other words, I don't want you to miss salvation in this season. I don't want you to miss sanctification in this season. I don't want you just running to him just because guess what? We're in need and the world is in a crisis and we go back to doing the same thing. Listen, in other words, why are we following him? Why are we fo- why is there such a great multitude? Why does why isn't there just multitudes? In other words, the count number going to come down in this season. Amen. There's such a shaking, amen, and separation that's actually happening in the body of Christ right now. But listen, they 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 was they was following him basically because of what he could do for them. But they missed who he was. They missed who he was. But listen, I love what the scripture says right here. Jesus knew their hearts. Here it is again, y'all. He knew their hearts. He knew that they desired the benefits, amen, of what he did rather than understanding who he was. Jesus already knew that they loved the gift. They loved his gifts. Amen. But not the life he was calling them to. In this season, I want to I wanna ask you, man, do you want his hand or his face? Man, somebody gonna have to help me with this, man. I had to check my own self with this. We gotta be diligent to look to look at within our own self to see God, am I seeking you? Uh, amen. Just for what I need from you or am I seeking you because of who you are? Even if the crisis wasn't happening, would I still be running to the church? Even if what was going on wasn't happening, man, would I still be seeking you the way I am right now? That's a good heart check right there, y'all. That's a good heart check right there. This is when and this is when in uh, uh, verse 25, he and he um, he turned and said to them, this is what I like about it. This is what this was the separation part of this right here. He turned and said to them, count the cost. That's all he said. He said, he turned and said to them to count the cost. He said this right here. He said, listen, if anyone in verse 26 comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children, brothers and sisters, he said, yes, uh, uh, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. Listen, verse 27, he said, and whoever does not bear his cross and come out to me, he cannot be my disciples. In other words, Jesus turned to the multitude and simply told them, you got to count the cost up. Basically, uh, uh, do you have enough faith, amen, to believe in the one who do all the building? Do we have enough faith in him for real, for real? That's the cost that we got to count. So now, listen, so now so far, We've learned in this particular text the importance of preparation and foundation. And I want to simply submit to you and let you know that it is necessary. Man, it's necessary. Counting up the cost is necessary. It's necessary, man. Listen, you none of us, amen, and I'm sure all of us been there before because I know I surely have. But listen, none of us want to go to Walmart, man, and, and have a buggy full of groceries. And you know for a fact you ain't got the $5 in your pocket, man. Tell my God going to make a way. Wait a minute. Man, he also gave me common sense. He also gave me wisdom, too, at the same time. We got to count the cost up first. We got to count it up first and see exactly what do I have and what I'm able to get with what I already got. Man, help me with this, somebody. Amen. It's necessary that we count up the cost, people of God. It is. It's necessary. Now, let's talk from a short perspective why this is so important. Well, let's look at verse 29. Amen. Let's go down to verse 29. Verse 29 says this, least after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish all who see it begin to mock him. Remember I told you on yesterday, man, that there are a lot of things that we see even in the world. We see we see projects like uh, uh, houses or, or buildings or stores or what have you, amen, where we can see where, where contractor builders came in and they started on it, but nobody finished on it. Can I tell you why? Because the person that, amen, initiated, the person that wanted this to come to pass, that had the vision of it, simply did not count the cost up. But I've told you on yesterday, man, listen, one of the things about foundation is that it's a public display. It's a public display. It's something, amen, that's going to be seen. It's something that's going to be displayed. So can I tell you something, man? God wants us, God desires that we go out representing who he is in a proper manner. We talked about that on yesterday. We talked about how we go out with our, our, our character, how our character, amen, should represent and reflect who he is in this season. How, amen, the love that we have on the inside, amen, for him should reflect upon his people. Amen, it should reflect who he is in the growth 
grocery stores. It should reflect who he is in our, our in our kids' school. It should reflect who he is in the neighborhoods. In other words, we we should, we are made in his image and in his likeness. We're on public display right now. And it's important to know exactly, amen, who we are and what we're going to be doing in this season, man. It's important. It's important. Let's go down to verse 30, and I'm almost done, guys. Listen, the word says this, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Amen. We talked about that earlier. We got to become good finishers just like we became good starters in this season. We got to become good finishers just like we became good starters. Understand when we decide to want God more than the stuff, then he makes you have enough. Listen, let me read that one more time. Understand when we decide to want God more than we want the stuff, then he makes you have enough. He prepares the numbers himself. In other words, he covers the cost because our perspective is in line with this word. Our hearts are lined up exactly where he needs us to be. Amen. Let me read that again because I want you to catch that, man. Understand this, that when we decide, in other words, when we make the decision, amen, that God, I want you over the stuff. I want you, amen, over, amen, anything else that... I know for a fact in that moment, you're going to make sure that I have enough. In other words, you're not going to allow me to go out and be made a mockery of. In other words, I know for a fact that you're the one that's preparing the numbers. He covers the cost. He chooses the place to build. In other words, man, you got to help me with this right here. Listen, I want to read this really quickly, man. Hang on to that note. Philippians 1 and 6. Amen. It simply says this. Philippians 1 and 6. It says, listen, Paul says it like this. We got to be confident in what? We got to be confident in this very thing that he who begun. See, you got to understand that he in this moment, the pronoun right here. You got to understand the power that he has and not the power that we has. You understand? We got to understand that he who begun a good work is him operating through us. That's what it gives us the power to do it. Amen. That's what gives us, amen, the, the ability and the initiative to be able to do it. We don't do anything on our own. It's God that's on the inside of us, man. He that be, who have begun a good work in you will perform it. Guess what? Until the day of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> God ain't slack concerning anything concerning our lives, man. He ain't slack concerning his promises. He's not slack concerning his word. He's not slack concerning it. I promise you, man, all we got to do in this season is learn how to prepare. We got to become good preparational people. I'm telling you, we got to learn how to prepare for what God has taken us to, man. And how, how do we get that? Simply, man, by staying in prayer, taking heed to the instructions that he's giving us. Amen. Being uh, uh, consulting him for every decision. Amen. That he wants a amen us to do uh, anything that you want to do. All we got to do is come, go, go before the throne of grace. Go before God and say, Lord, listen, exactly. Exactly. Thank you, uh, Minister Mark. A finished product, a finished product. We got to become good finishers just like we became good starters. So listen, man, that's going to conclude. Amen. My lesson in my closing. Amen. I just want to simply. Amen. Um. Just leave you with that thought, man. Leave you with that thought for today, man. I'm, I'm so honored that you guys are joining me. Amen. Again, um, on live, it, it is a blessing, amen, to see each of you this morning. I pray that the word, amen, was a good motivation for you, man, because in this season, we truly, amen, got to submit ourselves. We got to submit ourselves, amen, um, under the under the word of God, man, and we got to get in the presence of God, and, and we got to learn how to prepare, amen, in every season, man. We got to learn exactly how to prepare, amen, in every season. So in my closing, listen, if you'd like to give, amen, or, and support, amen, the ministry, amen, we got different ways how you can give, amen. I'm sure somebody's going to pin that, amen, on the live this morning, but listen, you can, you can um, give, amen, by downloading our Impact app, Amen. In your Play Store, Amen. And select I Give. You can go to your Play Store and um, and you can type in Impact, Amen. And I'm telling you, you'll see, Amen, our church logo, and you can select I Give up under the app. And I'm telling you guys, listen, use this app, man. This app is amazing. I said it yesterday, and I'm gonna say it again today, man. The app is absolutely amazing, guys. It has 
all of the teachings, all of the recordings, amen, that we're doing, amen, on live um, uh, uh, Monday through Wednesday. Um, you can go back. We got, we, I promise you we got enough time, but you can go back, man, and listen to um, all the teachings that we do on Sunday morning, amen. Um, you can go back and listen to those teachings, and I promise you, man, um, it, is, it, is, it is all in the Word. It is all in the Word, man. Good teaching and good biblical principles, amen, that's in the Word of God. So listen, if you'd like to give again, amen, to, in the support of our ministry, amen, you can download our Impact app under the Play Store, amen, and you can select I Give. You can select I Give, or you can text IFAM to 77977, or if you want to give by Cash App, you can um, Cash App the church, dollar sign, Impact, K-A-F. Let me say that again. You can Cash App, amen, the ministry, dollar sign, Impact, K-A-F, amen. So listen, it has been nothing but a blessing, amen, to be in your midst this morning. So um, I want to thank you guys once again for chiming on. Listen, meet me right back here tomorrow morning. Amen. Meet me right back here tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. live. Amen. Mother Mark, would you please pray us out this morning? Listen, Facebook family, thank y'all so much, man, for joining us. Amen. I love you guys. Be blessed in your day. Be safe. Amen. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow morning.